the technical troubles now, so let's go straight to Kasia's presentation because uh, she's all eager to go. My name yes, is Stepanka Bilova, I'll be ho ho hosting the conversation. This is Katarina Opia from the Jagiellonian Language Center and she will give us a lot of tips on how to use YouTube in our language classes. Okay, the thank you very much. Um, I think I'll sit down because <sighs> this way I'll be able to, uh, to, to see you. Um, uh, your lovely must faces. Um, yeah, so let's let's maybe jump straight into it. Um, um, I've been my um, background is in private language schools. Uh, so before uh, starting, uh, before I started working for the Guyana University eight years ago, um, I worked in language schools, and uh, there was this very strange in Krakow, and uh, there was this very strange division in language schools. So uh, the Polish teachers taught grammar. And the native speakers of English uh, taught uh, vocabulary and speaking, so they had the you know what's on paper more attractive. So I had to somehow you know make it work, make it more attractive. Uh, I didn't want to make students snooze, so obviously uh, I had to come up with my own bag of uh, sort of tricks and clowns and balloons, if you will. <laughs> yes. So so this is what I'm going to uh, be talking about. I don't know. I mean, I'm going to blitz through the first part because you're all experienced teachers, and you know, this is nothing. This is this isn't going to be anything new for you, and so I'll be going through the slides quite quickly. Um, yeah. So how to approach teaching and not put students to sleep? That is um, I don't think I have enough time to show you the video. So this is uh, obviously from uh, the film Madagascar. Uh, the, the the our friends are being chased by a, a pack of uh, hungry cat-like creatures uh, indigenous to Madagascar and you know it's all very dramatic there's a lot of screaming and running around uh, so obviously it can be used for speculation uh, future tenses past tenses even um, so uh, the first one so may might could will to predict the events what will happen what might happen to Marty the zebra is the zebra uh, is Alex the lion going to eat everyone and so on? Because he has a bit of an identity crisis uh, in that film, <laughs> if you remember. <laughs> um, yeah, so then you uh, get students to, to try to predict what could happen and write a mini story. So this is our first stage, this is our basis. Uh, what is happening in the video? And then uh, you have students turn away, so uh, you have students in pairs, one of them is uh, facing away from the screen and the other one has to uh, describe what's happening uh, to, to, to him or her in, in real time. And then they swap. So this is great. Uh, it's very fast paced. Uh, it forces them to think on their feet. Uh, it turns out that they don't know a lot of vocabulary. So maybe, you know, if, if they're level level, you can get some of these difficulties out of the way before you start. Um, but yeah, it could be a great uh, revision for, for stronger students. Uh, B1, B2, and it's fantastic fun. So, um, so that sort of lowers inhibitions as well. Uh, okay, so we have that, uh, and that, yeah, more fun. Uh, so, what happened in the video? So, there's, uh, we we switch to past tenses. Uh, then they turn to another pair of students. They uh, uh, discuss the events using past tenses. Um, so, they sort of you know recontextualize it. Uh, they see how much they remember. They exchange information. <clears throat> And then they write um, a summary of the events using, again, narrative tenses and, and pairs. Uh, and obviously, you can walk around. Uh, you can help. You can try to assist them if, if necessary. And that works really well. And this is the final stage. Uh, we have, so we already have a story. They've already written a story, a beautiful story, I think. Uh, you know, I mean, it's, they're usually crazy stories. And then on top of that, uh, oh, sorry, I'm actually thinking of something else. Uh, on top of that, that, they can add adverbs of manner, time, etc. So they beautify something that they have already created. Um, I use it in a, I use this exercise in a similar way when they uh, write their own original story. They're not describing anything. Um, I give them uh, slips of paper, uh, and they're asked to ask. Uh, they're asked to write nouns with collocations like uh, a beautiful teacher. <laughs> I don't know, black dog, and things like that. Um, so at least twelve, 
Uh, I put them in groups of three, and then they draw them one by one, and they have to start. Uh, I usually give them the beginning of the story. Like, it was a beautiful Sunday, fri Friday morning. Uh, I went for a walk, and then, I don't know, I saw, I saw a beautiful teacher tending to her garden or whatever. Uh, and then the next person uh, picks another <clears throat> cue and uh, provides another sentence. They write all of this down, uh, and then uh, if and then we add adverbs uh, of, of manner, time, etc. On, on top of that. So this is multi-stage uh, activity, which is very nice. Uh, where's that? Yes, uh, this is my probably my favorite film <laughs> of all time. If you don't know it, please watch it. Okay, you will not regret it. These are socks. And there is a penguin, right? Yeah, so the <laughs> quiet Ryan penguins. Um, these are like deadly Sicilians, okay? These penguins. I swear. <laughs> I'm actually. I feel very tempted to uh, show it to you, but I don't think. Uh, I don't think we we have enough time for that. Um, so yeah, it's epic. It's an epic fight. I highly recommend uh, watching it, using it uh, in the classroom. So here we have model perfect verbs. Right. Uh, so, what might have happened before the epic fight scene? Uh, what could have? Uh, what could both murder as penguins and uh, there's um, yeah, uh, there's a human girl and a stork trying to help a baby find its home. So, spoilers. Um, so, what could have been? Uh, could they have been after the baby and so on? And uh, there's a lot of uh, we have speculations there. <coughs> might have been. Could have been. Might have wanted. Must have wanted. Etc. And uh, <laughs> yeah, so this is a nod to culture, uh, which I so I, I I was born in the '80s, so uh, I obviously grew up with it. Uh, that's what we had, and it was uh, it was great. I have to say, Zvirek Muhomorek, Makova Panenka, everything. I'm a huge fan still. <laughs> so uh, these are iconic, obviously. <laughs> So you can use something that students know. You can use something that's you know dear to your heart and make them love it. Uh, so yes, yeah, there's there's no limit to what you can do with um, a video with no dialogue. Uh, so there is so much you know tenses, gap fills, uh, with vocabulary, with grammar structures. You can write dialogues. Uh, there's there's truly no limit. So just an idea, and unfortunately, I don't have time to show you this video, but this is truly amazing. They destroy the house completely. <laughs> the building, yeah, an aquarium for a tiny fish. Right, uh, so this is something, um, you don't actually know who I teach. Uh, I teach English to uh, psychology students and film studies, uh, film majors. Uh, so this is for my psychology students. This is Ash Conformity Experiment. Um, so the idea is that people conform to what the group wants express, expresses. So we basically follow the crowd, uh, and it's very true. Um, so I show them the Ash experiment. They're usually uh, already familiar with it. Sometimes they're not. So I'm excited because I'm an English teacher and I, you know, teach them something uh, from from their field. <clears throat> um, so they watch the the experiment and. Yeah, so in the experiment, uh, there are actors, and there's one real participant who has no idea what's happening. Um, and they're supposed to um, evaluate the length of lines. They're supposed to compare them and say, you know, which lines are the same. And this poor participant is, is on his own. Um, and uh, so the actors give wrong answers. And he knows that these answers are wrong, but, you know, people doubt their own mind. Uh, they don't want to rock the boat. Uh, and, and so this is what happens in, in the experiment. And, you know, I think we, we all give in to, to peer pressure. Um, yeah, so what would you do? What would you have done if you had participated? Uh, what do you think the subjects said and so on? Uh, yeah, so there was a second phase <clears throat> and um, where the participants were given a, a friend, a, co you know, a, a partner. And that obviously changed the, the results because they felt more comfortable uh, resisting. Okay, uh, another one, um, the bystander effect, uh, which I'm sure you must have seen in real life. So a person is lying unconscious. You don't know if they're drunk, you don't know if they're hurt. 
Uh, no one is doing anything. <laughs> I have seen it a lot of times, actually. And <clears throat> I was usually the only one who, who did anything. Uh, but it's actually, in a way, natural. Uh, when there are more people around, you're less likely to receive help uh, than if there's just one person and the pressure is on them. If they don't help you, no one will. So, so yes, you're more likely to, to receive help then. Um, and again, so as, as revision, what would you have done if you had been faced with a similar situation? Have you been in one? Uh, what happened? What would you have done diff differently? So it's a good idea to, you know, uh, put these things in bold, uh, tell the students that they have to, you know, to really look at the questions and use the questions in their answers, uh, because there is usually a big problem with accuracy. They understand the third conditional, but they don't really use it. They're like, oh, yes, I know, I know how to do it on a test, but not really uh, when it comes to a natural situation, a natural conversation. <clears throat> uh, yes, whatever happened. All right. Yes, reported speech. <laughs> yes, of course. Um, so this is when uh, Rachel finds out about Chandler and Monica, and she's very eager to uh, tell uh, Joey, but he just really he refuses secrets and he's just bursting at the seams he just doesn't want any more um, yeah so you can uh, have your students well if they're more advanced uh, write a transcript later transform it using reported speech which is a bit tough uh, or with weaker students you just give them the gap transcript they fill it in and then they have to turn everything into reported speech so this is quite uh, you know a nice way of uh, exposing them um, to it Obviously, I have other exercises, but this is just an example with, you know, YouTube, using YouTube. Chandler says, laundry, huh? Is that my new nickname? Yes. <laughs> yes. Okay. Uh, yeah, so then they rewrite the text using reported speech. Same. All right. Yes. Um, so this is from a lesson that I wrote. Uh, you can use you can use YouTube videos to, for information. Uh, so this is a talk by Stephen Friend, at The Hunt for Unexpected Genetic Heroes. So um, genes which protect you against diseases. Um, so you have the gene that predisposes you to get a certain disease, but you're healthy. You're you're fine. Why? <laughs> so. <clears throat> So that's the video, it's quite interesting. Um, and one of the things I did with it, so this is obviously part of a longer lesson, um, is this. So that was one of the exercises. Um, yeah, so this is part of the, part of the talk. Uh, and uh, they have to, uh, trans uh, they have to um, form, new, form words. And then they just listen and, and check. So it's just a, a nice, nice idea to incorporate what formation into um, a lesson. Okay, listening comprehension. So, something from film studies now. Uh, yes, okay, so 50 years of listening comprehension. <laughs> uh, yeah, how to trick them. Uh, just, I mean, you know this. Keep it varied uh, because they get bored. I get bored very easily and very quickly, and I get, I'm very dramatic when I get bored. So. Uh, I try to avoid that with uh, with students as well. So um, obviously there can be matching exercises. There can be lots of uh, other exercises, you know, true false, etc. But um, it's just more effective if they get involved and they prepare the glossary. So they're given words that will pop up in the video uh, that might uh, obstruct their understanding, you know, the comprehension of the video. Um, I divide them into groups. Uh, they look the words up, they teach each other, and uh, it works beautifully. And the burden is on them and not on me to, to provide the, these uh, definitions. And they're just more eager to learn from you know, their peers than from me. So, uh, Yes, so this is... Okay, so this is different vocabulary, but an example of what I would, uh, what I would have used uh, later. So it's still... Oh, you will see what film, uh, what, what, what director this is going to be about. Um, so um, I took a vocabulary from a video and then I wrote this. Um, so I wrote a short review of uh, Roma. Um, and yeah, so they have to use the video, uh, sorry, they have to use the vocabulary which they looked up earlier in groups and use it in, um, in different contexts or in any context. 
Yes. Um, I recommend it. If you're teaching film students, this is very nice. So the takes and screen prism and, and many others. Um, I have sources at the end of um, the presentation. Mm. Yes, so uh, the, 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 uh, answer the question. So we have open questions. What's the purpose of zooming in, in Barry Linden? Uh, what does the opening shot of lead time makers do? And, and things like that. So yeah, we have uh, open questions um, that they have to answer, obviously, while listening. They have to write down the answers. Uh, okay. And uh, discussions, gap fills. Um, so I just, you know, prepare a, a transcript, cut out some holes, and uh, you know, for the uh, vocabulary, they're more interested in the, you know, them in practicing and hearing. Could be the same vocabulary that they looked up before, uh, which makes a lot of sense because that's, uh, you know, that would be the, the, their third exposure to this uh, vocabulary. And with film studies, there's usually a lot. Uh, okay, more discussions. So I break it up all the time, you know, which I change things up all the time. Um, you know, so we have, we have a few minutes and then something else, a few minutes and, and something else, uh, something different. This is a long video. This is a 16 minute video, as you can see. Uh, so this is not a transcript. So uh, I created, so obviously I made a transcript and then I paraphrased everything which is a lot of work, but um, I think it works much better because they have, they have to be really careful. They have to really listen very, very carefully uh, for, for the target vocabulary. And again, the vocabulary is usually the same. Uh, and this is their, I don't know which, which exposure, but, uh, but there's, <clears throat> yes, they get more um, reinforcement. Okay, and then there's another one. So this is actually about, this is from my lesson about Bojack Horseman and just generally cartoons for adults, uh, one of my favorite. Um, yes, so uh, <laughs> I'm a huge fan of Donald Trump, what can I say? Um, yeah, so we take the same vocabulary um, and uh, then we have to use one word. One word has to fit both the sentences. Um, yes, and there are uh, sentences about Donald Trump. I think there's another one. Yeah, oh, at least, yes, Mr. Trump has been uh, delivering similarly, I think, vapid speeches around the whole country. And uh, his frequent abuse of Twitter and provoking North Korea has been decried by many Republicans. I am a fan, yes. Uh, all right, so there's that. And, uh, and then they uh, could write a review of, you know, anything you want. They could write a short story. They could write, um, I don't know, anything, you know, anything. Okay. <laughs> Why? Uh, okay. Um, get out using the vocabulary. Yes, so um, how to become a slightly better than average YouTube user. I'm a huge, I, I consume YouTube, uh, YouTube on a, a videos on a daily basis. I watch between 15 and 30, which is a bit disturbing, I think. Um, yeah, so this is me making weird faces. Um, anyway, uh, this is my desktop, my laptop desktop, anyway. So, no, Mr. Bot, I expect you to die. All right. Um, streaming. I don't think, uh, I don't know if, if I should get into it. this. Do you know how to stream or uh, using YouTube or not? No. Okay. So let's just do it very quickly. I'm actually not going to use slides this time. So um, yes. Okay. So this is my, okay. I can't see half of the screen. Why? Uh, okay. Right, so uh, this is unfortunate in Polish. Sorry about that. Uh, I don't think it can be changed. But uh, if you have a functioning uh, camera and microphone on your laptop, you're basically good to go. There's nothing new that you have to get, nothing that you have to buy. Uh, you just click on this icon and uh, you either upload a film or you start a transmission live. Uh, it doesn't uh, work uh, straight away. No, you have to wait for 24 hours. Um, so <clears throat> uh, you sort of, you, you register and you wait for 24 hours and then you're good to go. Um, yes, you can upload films. And, okay. Right, so I think we could, we could start one uh, right now. 
Yes, I think it's allow. Yeah, so you give it a title, uh, you decide if it's public, if it's uh, available to only people with links, if it's uh, just visible to you, if it's for children, um, you know, any uh, age restrictions and, and things like that. And, and that's really it. You can plan it for later um, as well. And there's no new software that you need, which is, uh, which is absolutely fantastic. That's, that's all there is. Uh, can you do it from your phone? No, unless you have 1,000 sub subscribers, which I, which I don't, and I don't think I will ever have. <laughs> I don't really have a proper YouTube channel. I just do it for, you know, for teaching every now and then. Um, <clears throat> right. So, uh, so is the time pressure is getting to me, as you can probably tell. Mm, okay, let's take this video and butcher it. Yes, and butcher it, shall we? Yes, so uh, this is one of the videos I recorded um, maybe a week ago. Uh, okay, you have to go to... Um, okay, edit. Right. So this is the video. How do you make timestamps, uh, which is very useful because people are busy nowadays uh, and they want to get to a specific part of a video. So how do you do it in your own? Um, like this. So this is, it's called, it's description in English, or I don't know, it's in Czech, it's opis in Polish. Uh, so let's say we want to go to, to ah, okay, yeah, the Czech um, keyboard. It's going to be interesting. How do you... No. No. How do you make a colon? Yeah, okay, I've got, yeah, got it. Um, okay, we want to go to, how long is it? Okay, we want to go to 122, and that's, that's basically done. Uh, six, not six, um, six, not six, because there's, it's shorter. Okay, uh, that's, that's fine, that's enough. So this is how you do it. Um, if you want to do it on somebody else's video, Uh, yeah, okay, so <laughs> some of the stuff that I watch. The Showgirls Redemption. I'm a vegan, as you can be. <laughs> okay, uh, so we have this plant based uh, news uh, video. It's uh, one of the channels I subscri subscribe to. Uh, it's 2.59. All you have to do is do the same thing in the comments. Okay, so one and. <clears throat> where was it? It was here, and let's say 11. You want to go to 11 and comment and yeah you have a timestamp okay so yeah we have to skip the ads and everything but you can we'll let you know the picture. Next few okay and it went to 111 that's all there is it's beautifully simple yes uh okay let's let's carry on butchering the video <clears throat> Uh, okay, uh, so it already has, uh, if you set the language of the channel to uh, English, it will add subtitles automatically. Uh, can you edit subtitles? Yeah, now in the break, so that's all, let's let you know that yes. we are now starting five minutes break. Okay, so, <laughs> yeah, right, so five minutes. So, so what you, yeah, 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 if mm -hmm. there's anything that, because people might be going to, to add Yes, yes, I know. Yeah. Okay, so is, 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 would anyone like to leave now? Because they, they would... No? Okay. Um, yeah, the check is getting in my check is getting in my way right now. So uh, yeah, okay. Mm. Okay, so we have obviously you have to save that. Um, Mm -hmm. so, okay. Is there anything you would like to really stress or conclude with? Uh, I mean, I didn't yeah. show a lot of yeah. things. I didn't manage to show a lot of things, so... Um. Is there any questions? Let's... 
Uh, do you have any questions? Maybe I w you would like me to show you something. Yeah, a very practical yeah, one. Yeah. Uh, will your presentation be available at the summer so that we can have a look at the resources or something? Yes, I will be happy to email it to anyone, to email it to Stepanka, mm -hmm. yeah, you know, yeah, no, no, it's upload it somewhere. Yeah, with yes. the organizers. Yeah, I think that's yes. definitely yes. a good Yeah, I'll be very, very happy to, you know, answer any questions to you afterwards. And, um, yes? Uh, I haven't used YouTube streaming ever. Mm -hmm. Maybe watch more YouTube videos than you for a day. Really? <laughs> <laughs> Not every day. I'm kidding. But I must talk too yeah. late. <laughs> uh, uh, like a lot of people, I was getting used to online teaching with the coronavirus yes. situation. And uh, Microsoft Teams, and some students were saying, oh, you can record it, or can we record it? Can you compare the two? Um, yes. So I've been using MS Teams, um, and MS Teams is better when it comes to uh, if when it comes to, to streaming and uh, because this is very useful. I've recorded uh, a video uh, of myself explaining um, reported speech, so like you know how to crack reported speech in five minutes, which I was going to um, show you because you can record um, a video with all the voice um, just using your laptop, which is very nice. Uh, so you have to have a program like Live Capture. Um, and, and you just you know capture what's what's happening on, on the screen. Uh, you don't have to use PowerPoint. You can use a Microsoft Word, and you just record yourself explaining things if you have a working microphone, and um, yeah, and, and that's pretty much it. Uh, but yeah, so so that was that. Um, I recorded a lot of things that I uploaded either to Pegasus, which was another uh, platform that we used, uh, or Microsoft Teams. Uh, when it comes to working in students in uh, like communication type of context, MS Teams is better because you can divide them in groups. Uh, you can open different channels and then you have them working in, I don't know, groups of three and you jump between the, the, the channels and, you, you know, you supervise them, which stresses them out. Uh, but you can't really do it on, on YouTube. And on MS Teams, there's, as you know, there, there's also chat, the chat. Uh, so I think uh, MS Teams in this respect um, is, is better. So yeah. I'm wanting to look at what you've done with the other students later because they couldn't come. Yeah, yes, the yes, yes, absolutely. So yeah, recording is a very good idea. And actually, uh, let me just very quickly go back to my, um, the ideas that I come up with. Um, how can you use it? Um, yeah, I've recorded videos explaining grammar structures, modeling pronunciation, because that's, uh, and <laughs> I have videos, uh, um, recordings of myself saying clandestine, clandestine. Uh, uh, they could uh, record, because, uh, but then the burden is, is on you, but I think that's, that's something that should be done, uh, something that they can refer to and, and rewatch over and over again. Uh, they could record content for uh, a channel devoted to psychology from studies, whatever else, translate already existing videos from Polish to English, from you know, whatever other language. Um, you can translate subtitles for some videos. Some um, content creators don't allow that. But there are some videos that can be, you know, you can ask, okay, go to this video, translate the subtitles. Uh, make new subtitles, so it can be done. Uh, they could uh, watch a tutorial and cook something. <laughs> take photos, po post to Instagram, uh, make a real or a parody tutorial, uh, prepare quizzes, uh, I don't know, just the possibilities are endless, uh, as, you know, as, as far as I'm concerned, and it's, this is what makes it very uh, exciting, but, you know, in, in terms of your question, I think MS Teams is better when it comes to, you know, speaking in pairs and, and groups. Sure, but sometimes, yeah, if you want to just look through some material and, mm -hmm. and just pass on a few vocabulary words yes. and make a little video and anybody yes. can access it. Yeah, or even yeah. a voice recording. So, yeah. so I, I, I posted those to, to the platform that we use um, in addition to, to MS, MS Teams and, and, it, and they found it really helpful. So when you have them just, uh, you know, just read grammar rules, uh, it's, it's better if you supply them with, you know, with, with your own voice, with, with your own explanations as, yes. as well. They, they found it, I asked them, they found it very, very useful. Well, super, thank you again. Okay, thank you very much. So, thank you very much, Katia. Yeah. A lot of people still want to go. Yes, so I, I know, I know. <laughs>